Okay, next uh, we would like to define this famous constant E, which is also known as Euler's number or Napier's constant. And this constant plays an important role in, in the study of complex numbers. But first, let us define uh, the natural logarithm. Okay, definition of natural logarithm. Uh, by the way, in this part of this lecture, we assume that you already know some calculus, like integration and differentiation and so on. Okay, so here's the definition of the natural logarithm. It's a function called log uh, from this interval, from 0 to infinity, not including both ends, to uh, real numbers. And we define this function log as this. Log of x is equal to the integral from 1 to x. And 1 over t and dt. Okay. So, okay, so if we plot this uh, function, 1 over t, it looks like this. So t and 1 over t is something like this. So it's a decreasing function. So when t is 1, uh, this value is 1. Okay. And this integral means the area under the curve. So suppose this is x. So in this case, uh, the value of log x is this, this area. Okay. But uh, this x can be less than 1. You know, the, the dom domain of this function is from 0 to infinity. So this x can be less than 1. In that case, if this is x, then uh, the area under the curve is negated because uh, if uh, x is less than 1, so that is the upper limit is less than the lower limit of this integral. So the sign is inverted. And uh, it's the negative of this area. Okay. And x, if x is exactly at 1, the value of log x is 0 because it's just this line. Okay, so here are some uh, properties of this function. First, log of 1 is 0, as we have mentioned, because this is an integral. So if this uh, lower uh, limit uh, bound and upper bound is the same value, then this integral is 0. So this holds. And second, this function is a strictly increasing function because 1 over t is always positive. So if you integrate this, uh, this integral only increases as x increases. So uh, increasing function, uh, okay, let's say log x is strictly increasing. So this means if x is x1 is less than x2, then that means log of x1 is less than or log of x2. Okay? We say strictly, this means if x is less than x2, uh, x1 is less than x2, then this uh, log of x1 cannot be equal to the log of x2. Okay, it is strictly less than this. Okay, so this means strict, strictly, strictly increasing. And also, uh, in the third property, uh, this is continuous. So we haven't defined what continuous function means yet, 
but I hope you already know what it means at least intuitively okay so this means okay if you plot log x it looks like this it is strictly increasing and it takes value of 0 at 1 and when x is less than 1 it has negative value okay and and it it is continuous function so this means there is no gap sub anywhere so it doesn't look like something like this there's no jump it doesn't happen it's continuous okay so those are the basic uh, features of this uh, natural logarithm okay next we prove a little lemma about this function uh, let's say y1 and y2 are real numbers and both of them are positive okay then we have this equality y1 times y2 its logarithm is equal to the sum of their logarithms okay let's prove this so by the definition of log this is an integral okay so that's 1 over x dx okay previously it, we wrote 1 over t and dt but uh, you know this variable of integration doesn't matter you know, it's just a name and by a property of integral this is equal to uh, let's say this is y1 and x dx plus from y1 to y1 times y2 and dx okay but this part is log x log y1 and the second integral and uh, let's see if we change the variable from x to okay uh, just a moment so let's change the variable from x to v where v is defined by x over y1 then the second integral should be equal to from 1 to y2 and 1 over v and dv to see this oh, to see this uh, let's see so dv is dx uh, over y1 and 1 over x 1 over x is uh, let's see y1 time uh, 1 over y1 v right from this we get this and this so if we substitute this into here and dx uh, so this so the dx is equal to y1 times dv so this y1 will cancel so this dx is substituted here we get this okay uh, okay so when x is when x is y1 then v is 1 so x is y1 then y1 over y1 is 1 and when x is y1 times y2 then v is y2 right so therefore we get this integral but this is just log y2 so we get we have proved this lemma and as a corollary to this lemma we can prove uh, this uh, handy 
uh, theorem. So for all x uh, between 0 and infinity and, and any natural number, we have log x to the power of n is equal to n times log of x. Okay, and this should be uh, easy to prove because x to the power of n is x to the power of n minus 1 times x. So that is using the lemma we have this and x times x which is equal to log x n plus log of x and then we can decompose this part in the same way so in the end there will be n log x's so that should be equal to log of x and if you want to be uh, more formal then you can prove this by using mathematical induction and I suggest you do it. Now if we apply this corollary to the case where x is equal to 2, we have this uh, result. So log of 2 to the power of m is equal to m log 2. Okay, And we know that log of 1 is equal to 0 and, and log of x is strictly increasing. So this means log of 2 is positive. Okay, And if we increase the value of m, then this value can be uh, arbitrarily large, positive value. And here's another corollary for any x uh, positive number we have uh, log of 1 over x equal to negative log of x. To see this uh, this can be proved very easily so we know that uh, log 1 is equal to 0 but 1 is equal to 1 over x times x. So we have 0 equal to log 1, which is equal to log 1 over x times x, which is log of 1 over x plus log of x. Therefore, uh, we have log of 1 over x equal to negative log of x. So this means if x is greater than 1, then 1 over x is less than 1. So, uh, so this means log of x can be uh, uh, in this case, so in this case, okay, wait a minute. This case, log of 1 over x is negative. Okay, because log of 1 is 0, and 1 over x is less than 1 in this case, and log of x is strictly increasing, so therefore this must be negative. Okay. And we know that uh, as x increases to infinity, positive infinity, then log of x can be arbitrarily large. So you know it, it can be very large. So this means uh, log of 1 over x can be uh, very large negative values. So it can be arbitrarily large negative values. Okay, so this means uh, the values of log of x can span entire real numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity, of course excluding positive and uh, negative infinities.
So let us summarize the properties of log function uh, we have proven so far. So log is a function from this interval to real numbers. Okay, it's from zero to infinity uh, to uh, real numbers. So first of all, it is strictly increasing. Increasing. So this means log. Uh, this function is an injection. Okay. It's an injective. Okay. If uh, two values at x1 and x2 are different, then x log of x1 and log of x2 are different. Now this is a consequence of strictly increasing function. Okay, and second, it can take all real values. You know, it can take arbitrarily large uh, positive numbers and arbitrarily large negative numbers. So that means this function is surjective. And injective and surjective means it is a bijection. Okay, so this is a bijection. Bijection. So log of x being a bijective function, then there exists its inverse function. Okay. So if log of x is a bijection, then we can find its inverse function. So here's the definition of its inverse function. So we define this exp, exponential function. We define this function from real numbers to positive real numbers as the inverse inverse function of log okay so this this is how we define this exponential function well this is this turns out to be exponential function but uh, here we say exp Okay, now, now we can define the value of e. So the value of e is defined as the value of this function with argument of 1. Okay. Okay, so let's see some properties of this function. So if x1 is uh, equal to log y1 and x2 is equal to log y2, then we have seen that log of y1 times y2 is equal to uh, log of y1 plus log of y2, which is equal to x1 plus x2 by this. Uh, these definitions. Okay, so if we take the inverse of this, then we have y1, y2 is equal to exp of x1 plus uh, x2. But we can also take the inverse of this, right? So that means this is equal to y1 is equal to. Uh, exp of x1 and y2 is equal to exp of x2. So these uh, things are equal. So exponential of x1 plus x2 is the product of exponential x1 and exponential x2. 
and this holds for all uh, x1, x2 uh, in real numbers. Okay. And now it should be easy to see that uh, for any uh, natural numbers, we have exp n equal to exp 1 to the power of n, which is equal to e to the power of n. Okay. And for, and similarly, we have exp of negative n times xp of positive n. And we have seen that this is equal to this, uh, minus n plus n, which is uh, exponential of 0. But this should be equal to 1. Because as we have seen, uh, log of 1 is 0. So by taking the inverse of this, we we can uh, see that exponential of 0 is equal to 1, right? So this proves that from here this is equal to 1, so exponential of negative integer is equal to e to the power of uh, exponent uh, power of negative n, right? Because, uh, okay, maybe I should prove this a little bit more carefully. So this should be equal to exponential of n, but this is equal to e to the power of n, but this is equal to e to the power of negative n. Okay. So from this, we can see that for any integer, let's say z, uh, maybe I should write i. Okay, for any integer i, uh, i is confusing. <laughs> okay, uh, it sounds like uh, imaginary unit. So let's say uh, k, which is any integer. We have e to the power of k is equal to uh, exponential function of k. Okay. And furthermore, this uh, exp one over n is real, and it's a positive number. And if we take the power of this, then this. Uh, is equal to ex exp uh, n over n, which is uh, 1, which is e. So that means this exp of 1 over n is the, uh, the unique real nth root of Right, because if we uh, take the power of uh, this to uh, to the power of n, we get e. So this is the root, the real root. Okay, and next, uh, any rational number. Okay, m over n. So this is a rational number. Okay, m and n are integers and n is not zero. Okay, then x exp of m over n is equal to this, as we have seen, this to the power of m, but uh, this is, this inside is equal to e to the power of 1 over n. This is m. But this is equal to e to the power of m over n. 
So we have exp of x is equal to e to the power of x if x is either natural number or integer or a rational number. Okay, so so this is indeed an exponential function of x as long as x is a rational number. Okay, but we want to extend this to real numbers. So we want to say that instead of rational numbers, uh, we want to say uh, x is any real number. Okay, how can we do this? So that can be done uh, by uh, by considering the fact that uh, this function exp of x is continuous. Yeah, we've seen this is continuous, and any real number can be approximated by rational numbers to uh, any degree of precision. Okay, so for from this we conclude that this function, uh, the inverse function of log logarithm, is indeed the exponential function with the base of e. Okay. Now uh, we prove another lemma that is this this is one of the most uh, conspicuous properties of this function exponential function uh, ex is equal to e to the power of x okay so this means this function uh, e to the power of x or you know, exp of x is the solution of this differential equation. Okay, so let's prove this. Uh, let, first of all, let y equal to exp exp of x. Then, uh, by taking the inverse of this function, we have x equal to log of y. So let's differentiate both sides with respect to x. So the left hand side becomes 1 and the right hand side becomes, you know, uh, this is, by definition this is this, uh, integral of y 1 over t and dt. So this is uh, the primitive function is one of uh, y, and by the chain rule, dy dx. Okay, so from this we have dy over dx is equal to y. So that is uh, d dx x is equal to exp_x, and we are done. Okay, at this point, let us review what we have done so far. First of all, we defined this natural logarithm function, and we have shown that we have seen that this is a bijection. So, based on this fact, we defined this uh, its inverse function, so inverse. Okay. Then, based on this function, we define this constant e as the value of exp one. Okay. Then, next we have shown that for any natural numbers, we have uh, exp of n is equal to e to the power of n. Okay. Then 
we extended this uh, to any uh, integers. So I'm not much sure of integers. So for any integers, this exp of k is equal to the uh, to e to the power of k. Okay, so we first uh, show that show this relation for natural numbers, then extend it, it to uh, integers, then we extend it to uh, rational numbers, uh, rational numbers. Then by using uh, the continuity of this function, actually it comes from the continuity of the log logarithmic function, then we finally obtained uh, this relation for any real numbers. So this function, inverse function of logarithm, is indeed an exponential function. Okay. The next step is to extend this function to complex domain. Okay, so let's see. Uh, okay, let, here's a uh, definition. Let z be uh, a complex number, u plus i theta, where u and theta are real numbers. So we define e to the power of z as this, exponential of u times cosine theta plus i uh, sine theta. Okay. Here we are defining this function, you know, this z. This z is a complex number. Okay, but this one is already defined because this u is a real number. Okay, so this is already defined. And cosine theta and sine theta we have already defined. So here we are defining a new function, exponential function with, uh, with this constant e. Okay, e to the power of z, where z is a complex number. This means this, this, okay, so here's the definition of a new function in complex domain. So this is a function from uh, complex numbers to complex numbers, okay. But you should be a little bit worried because is this function really consistent with the function we have defined for real domain? You know, we could define anything, but if it's not consistent with our previous definitions, then we are in trouble. So to see this, you know, any complex number can be a real number uh, if its imaginary part is zero, right? So suppose its imaginary part is zero so if uh, if theta is zero then z is equal to u which is a real number so in this case e to the power of z the left hand side is equal to e to the power of u times cosine uh, zero plus i sine zero but sine zero is zero, so it, it's gone, and cosine zero is one. So therefore, this is equal to e to the power of u. So, this is the same as the exponential function in the real domain. So, uh, this uh, exponential function is defined on the entire complex plane. So real z and imaginary z. But as long as this real axis is concerned, 
as long as this real axis is concerned. On this axis, this function is the same as the exponential function we have defined for the real domain. And by the way, if uh, if theta is pi, then what happens? So that means uh, we have exponential of z is equal to uh, uh, theta is pi and let's say uh, u is 0. In this case we have exponential of 0 and cosine uh, pi plus i sine pi but sine pi is 0 and cosine pi is uh, negative 1 and this is 1 and z is in this case z is just i pi right, so it's exponential of e to the power of i pi is equal to negative 1 so this is a very famous uh, equation uh, now let us prove further uh, properties of uh, exponential function in the complex domain. So here's a proposition. Uh, let's say z1 and z2 are complex numbers and k is an integer. Then we have e to the power of z1, e to the power of z2 is equal to e to the power of z1 plus z2. So that's 1. And second, uh, e to the power of z1 to the power of k is equal to e to the power of k z1. So those uh, these properties are exactly the same properties as we had for uh, the exponential functions for the real domain. Okay, and proving this is not so difficult. We just go back to the definitions. Okay, so let's write z1 as u1 plus i theta1 and z2 as u2 plus i theta2. And of course u1, theta1, u2, theta2, they are all real numbers. Okay, then we calculate uh, this left hand side. So that is by definition, uh, e to the power of z1 is e to the power of u1, which is a real function, times cosine theta1 plus i sine theta1, and times e to the power of u2, cosine theta2 plus i sine theta2. So just expand all this, and in the end, we have e to the power of u1 plus u2 and times cosine theta1 plus theta2 plus i sine theta1 plus theta2 and what is this then? so this is actually the, the uh, according to the definition of the exponential function this is this is the polar uh, form of this exponential of z1 plus z2 right so if we add z1 and z2 we have uh, uh, as the real part it will be uh, u1 plus u2 so that is this part and as the imaginary part we have theta1 plus theta2 so that that is this so in the end we have this and I leave the second part as an exercise okay now let's go back to the polar form again so first of all we have this so if theta is a real number uh, exponential of i theta 
should be cosine theta plus i sine theta you know, by definition of this exponential function in the complex domain. Okay, so if we have a complex number, any complex number, with the polar form of this r times cosine theta plus i sine theta, then this is same as r times exponential of i theta. Okay, so these are so this is another way to express the polar form. And of course, we have, if we take the uh, reciprocal of this e i theta to the power of negative 1, that is r to the power of negative 1 times exponential of minus i theta. Okay. So this is just like exponential function. Okay. And okay, we have also if we have two polar expressions, polar forms, uh, i theta times s e to the power of i uh, psi. Okay, this is psi psi. By the way, this is a Greek letter psi, and this should be equal to. Rs times e to the power of i theta plus psi. And also, if we take uh, division, uh, not division, but, uh, ratio, i psi, then that is Rs this and exponential i theta minus psi. Okay. And also, we can express uh, e to the power of i theta as uh, cosine theta plus i sine theta and also exponential of negative i theta as cosine theta minus i sine theta. So from the, these two equations, we can derive that cosine theta can be expressed as uh, exponential of i theta plus exponential of minus i theta over 2 and sine theta as e i theta minus e minus i theta over 2i. Okay, so here are uh, another way to uh, express cosine theta and sine theta. We could have defined these two functions, cosine and sine, in this way if we already had uh, defined the exponential function. Okay, that's all for today.